members of the Internet Society, distinguished guest friends. It's um, an honor to be here, and I want to thank the Internet Society and Advisory Board for selecting me. And I also have to thank a couple of people, starting with uh, President Bill Clinton and Vice President Al Gore, late Secretary of Commerce Ron Brown. In 1993, they found a, uh, not just a non-engineer, but a lawyer. And not just a lawyer, but a, uh, a, a mass media broadcast lawyer. And gave me the charge of helping to develop policy for the United States with regard to how we were going to move forward on internet policy. Our credo was putting people first, which stacks up very nicely with what Andrew talked about, the internet is for everyone. And every day we were trying to figure out what could we do that would bring the internet to everyone. I'm a proud graduate of Northwest University and of Stanford University in the United States, and I was out in Palo Alto and Cupertino. And I was with Secretary Brown, who went down to Cupertino, the home of Apple Computer, and we saw these children around desks, and they each were around a network computer, and they were having a great time. And later that day, we went up to a low-income community in San Francisco called Hunters Point. They were poor students, they were predominantly minority students, they didn't have a clue that a thing called the internet existed. And from that came our decision that we were going to study the digital divide. We knew that in order to move policy in the United States and across the planet, we had to understand who was on, why they were on, who wasn't on, and why they weren't on. And then we had to develop policies that would bring all of these people to the net. Now, as everyone has said today, the internet is a collaborative effort. Nothing happens in internet policy without a whole bunch of people putting their shoulders to the wheel. I was fortunate. I had bosses such as Dave Barron, the Deputy Secretary. When I did my first study working with the uh, Census Bureau in the United States, so we did a 50,000-person study, my good friend, who's also from Queens, New York, Everett Ehrlich, was the um, Under Secretary of Commerce and helped me put that study together. Many of you know the brilliant Laura Breeden. Others of you know Bernadette Ma McGuire Rivera. You may not know uh, Becky Burr, but you should. Rowan Robinson, my deputy Tom Chagru, Jim Wazalewski, Kelly Levy, Jim McConaughey, and Wendy Leder, uh, Leder, who put together the first internet studies, the first falling through the net studies. There were so many more, but everything we did was a collaborative effort. I want to congratulate my fellow inductees, but I want to give a special congratulations to my longtime friend Dan Lynch, who's not going with us tonight, who'll be on a little later. And over the last couple of days, I've met people who I've interacted with over the, uh, Gene and I've met, um, over the online for, for years and have never met. And I've met other people here who we've interacted. Eddie L and I have um, a, a joint history with the uh, Leland Project, had never met, but our foundations were that great project. So I'm honored to be here today. In 1993, when we first started talking about the digital divide and doing the work that defined the digital divide, there were 15 million people on this planet, on the internet. Today, there are 4 billion. A lot of people in this room did a lot of work to make that happen. But we have a lot that we need to do still. This is the most transformative technology of our lifetimes. It is certainly the technology that has reached more people more rapidly than any technology in the history of this planet. We've done a lot of good work. But we've got a lot of work left to do. Just in my home country, the United States, just looking at children, there are three million stu students in the United States who are school age who go home to no internet. One out of seven kids in America don't have broadband at home, in a country where we have about a 90% internet penetration. Jessica Rosenworcel, the FCC Commission, has called that the homework gap, and it's a gap that we've got to cl um, close. More importantly, in, in the United States, there are still 5 million rural households, and there are 15 million urban and suburban households that don't have internet either because they don't have access in the rural areas or they can't afford it in the urban and suburban areas. We need policymakers to step up and change that. Globally, if you look at the front page of the Internet Society today, 51% of the planet is connected. But that means 49% aren't connected. And that's going to be the heart of 49%. The low-hanging fruit has already been gathered. I can't believe that we're still, we've come this far, and I can't believe how far we've yet to go. I want to continue to work to connect people, and, I, and I've been reading what Tim Burns Lee is talking about, not only connections, but meaningful connections. We've got to make sure that when people are connected, they're doing things with us that enhance their lives and enhance the lives of people they live and love with, they, they, love, they live with and love. That's what this Internet Society is all about. It's what my work throughout my career has been all about. My wife, Leslie, recently graduated from Divinity School, and she's here with me tonight, a little under the weather. 
So maybe it's appropriate that I close with a biblical verse. Galatians 6, chapter 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. With the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Adiel said something very similar in his statement this morning, this afternoon. Everyone here tonight has put their shoulders, worked against odds to make this a better planet, to make the internet a reality for all of our fellow citizens. That's the theme that we're, each, we're working with. It seems a proper direction for the path ahead. Thank you very much.